Russian Navy vessels have shelled the port city of Odessa on Ukraine's southern coast. That raises the possibility in the minds of several that the invasion could see Ukraine landlocked effectively. We're joined by Major General Chip Chapman, former head of counterterrorism at the MOD. Chip Chapman, appreciate your time as ever. Um, the Russians do seem to be making a fist of trying to cut Ukraine off by sea. They do. They've got too many axes. So in order to take Odessa, you really need to take Mekoliev and have a land and amphibious landing at the same time and to have Kherson potentially as a logistic base, which you can resupply both to the east and the west. That doesn't look like they are capable of doing that at the moment. So you would say that that is still stored. You'd say that Kiev, uh, Kiev access is still stored. And you would probably say that they're more successful in the Donbass. So the key question really is, are they in an operational pause and have to resupply in most of their theatres? Or are they in a position of culminating when they can go no further? And the answer to that gives you the potential for what will happen in the future, be it either a negotiation or a ceasefire. How much does it change things if Ukraine can't get stuff out of its ports. I mean, we read, don't we, that when it comes to the wheat harvest, I'm not sure there will be a wheat harvest in Ukraine uh, in any measurable sense this year, but they are massive exporters to uh, large parts of the world, aren't they, the Ukrainians, of wheat. If they don't have ports, and I'm guessing shipping is the way that wheat's exported rather than by road, th the world is going to feel that. It is. So essentially, the Black, Black Sea and the Sea of Evolve become almost a Russian lake. So that becomes a key negotiating factor. Now, it doesn't in the sense that Ukraine doesn't look like it's going to give up its territorial sovereignty of Ukraine, and neither should it if you look at the conventions which Russia has negated in its invasion, both, as, for example, the Buda Budapest Memorandum of 94 and the Helsinki Agreement of 75. I think we need to really look at the structure of the, the theatre of operations, which from a Russian perspective, includes both Ukraine, Belarus, and the, the west of Russia in terms of the railheads to resupply. So left bank Ukraine, that is the bit to the east of the Dnieper, really is the close battle for Russia in, uh, in theater war terms. The deep battle which we're seeing is to the west of Ukraine, where you do have what I would consider to be the only legitimate targeting going on in certain circumstances, such as, for example, in Lviv, the aircraft re repair factory and the attack on Yavorov, which, uh, of course, was a hub both for the resupply into Ukraine and potentially for the Western foreign fighters coming in to resupply the uh, Ukrainian forces. That is Major General Chip Chapman. Chip Chapman, uh, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot.